What's going on, y'all? So let's what's going on y'all so we are back listen me and aj got the same hairstyle like listen both our dresses i like to like scraggly at the moment i'm going to get my stuff done tomorrow so y'all ain't got to worry no more but um anyway let's just get into this episode of green leaf okay we have three we have three we have three episodes left okay i said this is a shortened season why and i know ambitious is supposed to be coming back in november too so ugh, okay that's cute or whatever but you know i i I need some more and I'm pretty sure it's going to be a big ass cliffhanger and you can't tell me that uh, Greenleaf didn't it get renewed for season 5 baby better have okay because last week's episode alone deserved the renewal for season 5 listen they didn't give us much on this episode but they gave us just enough it wasn't as much drama as it was last week but you know it was just enough so let's just get into it okay this whole situation the the bat pastor okay you know um bishop mind you this is episode seven reunited okay bishop called grace and charity and um aj oh wrong bitch a uh jacob downstairs okay and mind you um Grace was up there calling Sophia. Yo, Sophia, Sophia, have you seen AJ? Have you seen AJ? Mama, I have not seen that boy, and I didn't see him yesterday when you called. I didn't see him the other day when you called. I haven't seen him now when you called. If I see him or hear from him, I will let you know. Click. Girl, AJ up in her dorm room in Hampton. I'm sitting here like, girl, what is going on? My whole question is... How the hell did AJ and um Sophia get so close so quick, okay? You know, and... It, it, it just, it, for some reason, it doesn't sit well with me. Him and her being close like that, it just doesn't sit well with me. I don't know. Am I the only one that feels that kind of way? Like, I'm still trying to figure AJ out. AJ, what are you hiding? Okay? That's what I really want to know. And I think everybody wants to know, what is your problem? What is your deal? Okay? Um, You know, later with Sophia and all that stuff, AJ, I'm just going to go ahead and get that stuff out the way. AJ is out here you know trying to she she trying to convince him to go back okay if you're innocent you just need to go back no i'm only here because you're the only one that's treating me like family and stuff like that or whatever i said grace was treating you like family grace was giving you money grace was putting you up grace was doing what a mother was supposed to be doing back in the day you know she trying to make up for her wrongs or whatever i know it ain't all about financial but she was trying to love your ass but you weren't letting her you weren't letting her in and then when um grace kept on i mean Sophia kept on trying to pressure him into, you know, go back and do all this stuff and everything else. He getting an attitude with her. Okay. He cocking attitudes and, you know, getting loud with her. I said, AJ, you was a little raggedy, scraggly ass bitch. Okay. Cause you getting on my nerves. You, you push away everybody that's trying to help your ass out. Okay. Because you're doing some underhanded stuff. Now you need to just tell the truth so people can understand what's going on with you. All right. And it was making me mad the way that even though Sophia is irritating too, but the way that he spoke to her when he was in her room before he went to go get some cigarettes and some liquor. I said, nigga, you don't need no more. Your lips black enough, okay? Talk about some, you with your little light skin privilege and all this shit, and I'm a black man. I said, you not that um, you not that dark, okay? So and some people might consider your ass light skinned too, but I get what you're saying. You a black male in America, and um, it ain't that easy. They got a shelf for you. They waiting to put some handcuffs on you. I get that. I get that but you know little Sophia she may be naive about things but she just trying to look out for you and help your ass out it wasn't no need no cause for no attitude the way that she was doing and then this bitch let me tell you how naive she is she's still gonna try to give him money because you are my brother bitch by what DNA didn't say that yet <laughs> I didn't see the DNA paper okay so um you know, he go out to the uh the store and then um you know she going ahead and sneaking trying to sneak some money up in his uh uh but duffel bag, opens up the duffel bag and finds the prescription pills. Y'all, I thought y'all was in the comments saying that it was Sophia that did it. It was Sophia the one that did it. Sophia didn't know shit about them pills, okay? Girl, Sophia couldn't wait to go trick. Let me tell you something. Um, as I said last week, either he is selling those pills or or something could possibly be wrong with him and he needs those pills or you know he's just he does those are the only two things that I can think of okay and he won't tell nobody what it is and I'm not understanding why he's so closed off because if you are in a hole and if you need help 
this is the family that can help you. You have a family that is willing to help you. At least your mother and you know your sister will. So I'm confused. Your mother and your sister, they will. You know what I'm saying? So I'm confused as to where he's going with this and why he's being so secretive and why he's going out and lying about this. And if it was really him that did this, could have been somebody else or was he really the person? You just never know because y'all said it was Sophia and it wasn't, you know? So at this point, Sophia was like, why you lie? I thought, you know, um, you said that you didn't do it. Okay. And at this point, Sophia then came back to Calvary and told her mama, listen, the reason why I'm back, you going to want to be here. AJ lied. AJ lied. I found a whole bunch of prescription pills. I said, bitch, you couldn't wait. I don't mean to call a little girl a bitch. She grown enough because she in college. But girl, you could not wait to trick her. Baby, she was like, mama, you up here um, putting your life on the line. I said, oh, so now you care, Sophia? Mama, you out here putting your life on the line for this boy, and he out here stealing and doing all this stuff or whatever. Okay, moving on from that. Let's just get to Bishop and Lady May and the, and the family. Bishop want to have, um, Bishop want to have, uh, this little get together with the family. This is what he called charity and grace and, um, you know, Jacob down there for, okay. He want them to get together and remember what we did for mom, our 20th anniversary when I had all four of y'all, including Faith, y'all was up there singing a song for us and everything. I want y'all to do that tonight because, um, uh, I'm going to propose to your mother. You know, I was like, oh. Okay, because remember the last episode, they was clad up in the bed with each other. And uh, Lady May said, you can sleep here, baby. You can sleep here. It's all good. Uh, Bishop, you can sleep here. You don't have to get up. Okay? You know? And they was holding hands. I was like, I like this. This is what I like. I want more of this. Okay? And so he was ready to do all of this. And he hearing Lady May walking up. And she overhears what's going on. She's like, oh, shit. I was like, yes, girl. You're about to get proposed to tonight. Okay? So it can't nothing fuck your day up. Oh, I said it's green leaf, so of course it can. It can't go off without a hitch. You know that. Okay, that ain't how it goes. But, um, you know, at this point, Jacob is throwing shots and shade at uh Charity every which way about, you know, Phil the Mars and Hope and Harmony and all this stuff. And then basically he went on ahead and told her ass, listen, they got into an argument. Then this is before everybody came down into the room. They got into an argument and he was like, yeah, bitch, I sent you liking lips and everything with this man. You had your tongue so deep down in the throat you couldn't tell. Now, let me tell you something. It was either four things that was going on. Either you was getting used by Phil DeMars. Well, damn, Jacob. I said, well, bitch, that's the option right there. And at this point, I honestly don't know. But I really do feel like that's what's happening. Like, he probably do got a little bit of feelings for her. But, you know, he also, you know how they start off playing and then all of a sudden they get feelings. That's what it feel like is happening. Okay, just a little bit. Just a tiny bit. Like 5%. You know, I ain't going to give him too much because I still feel like the dumb bitch getting played. Okay? Mind you, mind you. Jacob said either that or you in love with him. That's number two. Or um, he forced himself on you. And then I, and if that's the case, I take you. I go down there and beat his ass right now. Or you trying to play him. That's what you trying to do. You trying to play him and get some more information or whatever. Okay, it's number four. That's what I was doing. You know, she was like, he was like, boy, if you girl, if you don't stop playing. And first of all, Jacob was looking at her like, bitch, you not smart enough to do no shit like that. Okay, so I already know that you're lying like that. And she was like, okay, fine. It's number two. Jacob was like, what was number two? I'm in love with him. I said, bitch, how? 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 You in love with him? See, Charity is so ugh to me. Like, and it's a lot of people out here. It's a lot of women. It's a lot of men out here who, as soon as somebody show them any type of attention, any type of attention, all of a sudden, you know, they are just open. You know, they in love. They fall for it. And they mistaken love for lust or they mistaken love for the attention that they didn't get when they was, you know, that they haven't been getting. And because they've been in, they've been so damaged or whatever. And see, you know, Charity, she makes you like, part of me understands why she's doing what she's doing. Okay. You know, you're upstairs. You got, you can't even bathe your own child, bitch. You got to have Marisol up there bathing it. 
Baby, I want to see Marisol's paycheck, okay? Because she do a lot. She do a lot. She the goddamn house cleaner and a fucking babysitter, bitch. Okay? Cleaner behind y'all asses and everything. I'm just over it, you know? I said you up in that goddamn mirror talking about some sermon. You know Marisol was sitting there in her brain like, this bitch is dumb. And I see exactly why she ain't no pastor. Because this some weak shit that she up here saying. And the bitch is um, contradictory as hell, okay? Up here talking about some pride, bitch. What about your pride? You know she was thinking that in her mind because that's what I was thinking and that's what y'all was thinking too giving that little so-called sermon you know then gonna throw grace up in the whole oh, gg I'm talking about you Satan got a hold of you too and I said baby girl baby girl let me tell you something while you up here trying to call grace out on her stuff and say that she prideful and all this stuff you are also committing sins too because you are going against your family you're being vindictive okay you're being very hypocritical you know and you are harboring these ill feelings against Against your family to get to what you want. You're being very selfish and narcissistic, arrogant and stupid, okay? You are sinning yourself. So you're not in good favor at this moment either. You're trying to do whatever you got to do to get to the um, place that you want to get to, no matter if it's a good place, a good way or a bad way. And, and, and you think that you're good? No, girl, you're not, okay? You're not. Moving on from that, um, you know, what else wind up happening with that? Um... Gigi, she up there trying to figure out what hope and harmony, you know, let me tell you something. So before we get on Carissa ass, Gigi, Grace, Grace was over there trying to figure out this whole stuff with the um buildings and stuff, you know, because Phil DeMars had her in a meeting for 20 minutes talking about parking lots and stuff like that. And so she trying to come up with a solution. It's this stretch of land that's between the parking lot, um, between the building and this other, you know, um, I guess, um, church or building that's around there. And she was like, we can use that for a parking lot. So she go and talk to the guy that owns it. And she said, you know what? If you would have uh, came to me earlier, sometime earlier, I would have just given it to you. But um, City of Hope or whatever it is, City on a Hill. City on a Hill came and brought it up for a lot of money. So therefore, we sold it to them. I don't know what they want that little stretch of land for, but they took it. So, you know, it is what it is. So at this point, um, <clears throat> Carissa asked, keep on getting text messages and stuff from Fernando. That's his name. Little Fernando from City on the Hill, a.k.a. Hope and Harmony. Okay? And so at this point, she's just sitting there like this. Fernando, give her that text message. She get, You know how Wendy is when you first start talking to somebody and you really feeling it. They made you feel good. And especially after you first do it and it's like really good. And then it's the next day and you like, oh, bitch. <laughs> I'm thinking about last night and it was just like really, really good. <laughs> And you looking at the text message and you just like, oh, boy, you better stop. That's how Chris was. And I was sitting here like, hmm, okay. And then Marisol, let me see Marisol paycheck because Marisol is the G. Bitch, Marisol do everybody dirty work because Marisol came up in that goddamn room in the suite and was like, you know, you busy. I can come back later. Carissa said, no, nah, you can go ahead and do what you need to do. And at this point, I'm noticing that she got this old school ass camera in her hand. You know, shake it like a Polaroid pitch up in her hand. And um, she started taking pictures. Carissa looking like, what in the world? She said, girl, uh, Lady May filed uh, up the insurance or whatever, update the insurance on the house or whatever. And so she wanted to take pictures of everything that's here. I said, Lady May that took Marisol and told her, just like she said, hide my valuables when AJ popped his ass up in the house. She said, take a picture of that whole suite and everything that's in it because I want to see, bitch, if you're going to steal it or not. That's what I want, okay? Because Carissa be aiming to take that damn furniture, okay? I said, you know what? Lady May is a shady bitch and I'm here for it with this bitch, okay? But, girl, that shit was funny to me. And she still got another text message from Fernando and she like this. <laughs> I was like, girl, we ain't never seen Carissa smile like that. Jacob ain't never give her the feels like that because she too busy trying to be Jacob's mama than her, than his wife and his lover. You know what I'm saying? But um, anyway, moving on from that, she go down there talking to Fernando about everything that's going on with the property, with the house, and where she come from, where she want to be at, and all this stuff. And then talking about the Greenleaf's house or whatever. He up here talking about some. Have you ever thought about what if some one of them died? I said, hold up. That was very, um, mm, that was eerie. 
girl, uh, sir, what you talking? And she was like, well, bitch, I'm not about to kill him. What's happening? He was like, I know that. I'm just saying, have you ever thought about who the house will go to, who the property will go to transfer to if either Lady May or Bishop or both of them passes away? And she was like, you know what? To be quite honestly honest, I don't know. And maybe I should look into that. And he was like, okay, yeah, you do that. But let me tell you something. I got a hotel room. You want to do what we got to do? And she was like, I told you. Imagine he all up on her now. I told you that um, this was going to be a one-time thing and I can't do that no more. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just saying, like, just take initiative and, like, put it on the books. Like, let's do it right here in your office. I said in the office, bitch. We did that, done that already. Let's go somewhere where we can't get caught. You got a nosy bitch like Gigi on your tail and she wasn't even trying to find shit on your ass, okay? See, Carissa is dumb. Carissa is dumb and I ain't trying to come for Gigi, but you get what I'm saying. Gigi just all, always stumble into some shit, okay? While she on a mission to find something, she stumble in on something else, okay? And that's exactly what wound up happening, all right? So at this point... <laughs> They fuck around. Gigi then went to Aaron to see who is sitting on the hill subsidiary with. And then he was like, you know, this like a company within a company and all this stuff. And I got, they had it so well. But, oh, bitch, I found it. Harmony and Hope. And she was like, Harmony and Hope. So they up here trying to, um, you know, take up all the stuff around the building. I said, yap, girl, yap, yap, you need to go ahead and figure out what's going on, girl. Gigi said, bitch, I'm on the case. I said, yes, you are. Yes, you are. If Gigi don't do nothing better, but you, Gigi going to find out. Okay, Gigi finna crack the code. She said, I'm crying San Diego up in this bitch. Um, she rode down there to the city on the hill trying to talk to Fernando. Baby, she couldn't even get to Fernando office because who comes strolling out with her titty down there about to pat pop out and the shirt still open i said looking freshly fucked looking freshly fucked i said god damn carissa you can't you you oh 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 i'm gonna have to teach you how to creep better okay you can't come out just looking and just give it off the glow that you just got your panties tossed okay you can't do that i mean when you come out you're supposed to come out with everything like you came in together okay she ran into grace and she was like oh my god Grace!" and she was like chris what you doing down here um i had some more stuff to sign or whatever so you know that this is harmony and hope and all this stuff so you you just gonna go ahead and sign this stuff or whatever listen ain't nobody telling me uh i don't know if she mentioned that it was harmony and hope but she said it's my property and i can we can do with it with whatever we want to do with it okay who are you uh grace i said grace pop that bitch See, Lady May ain't slap her hard enough, okay? Lady May ain't slap the bitch hard enough. And uh, I'm just getting annoyed because I said, bitch, you the one that came out this man's office with your titty damn near half out. I'm about to see nipple. You know what I'm saying? And you up here talking about some who are you, bitch? Who are you? You are Jezebel, okay? That's what you are. Let me put it in the biblical terms that you understand, you harlot, okay? You harlot, you know? And then she go off about her business and whatever, and I'm sitting here like, okay, Grace, you figure this shit out, okay? Man, meanwhile, Charity went over there to field talking about some... Oh my God, Jacob knows exactly what's going on. He knows that he saw us kissing. He was like, basically, I want you not to send that recording that I gave you yet. And he was like, are you sure? Like, listen, girl, I ain't got time to be playing games. So what if they know that we together? It is what it is. Listen, just don't send it yet. He said, you know what? Okay, here's the thing. I'll give you 24 hours. If you come in and you say that you want me to send it, I'll send it. If you don't, we'll destroy it together. I said, I don't trust that bitch. He's going to still send it. He probably sent it already. Okay, whatever he about to send it, he going to send it already. All right, next thing you know, Jacob then came up in there and um basically was like, listen, bitch. He was like, oh, so you here because you know about my relationship with Charity and, um, oh, no, that's not her name, Charity, and you want, um, you want to, um, use this to get your job back. He was like, no, bruh, at the end of the day, I know what Charity gone through. You know, she done had some fucked up men in her life or whatever, but I'm just telling you that I beat your motherfucking ass if you hurt my motherfucking sister, bitch. I said, at the end of the day, these motherfuckers still riding for each other, even though this bitch playing. And this girl, she should feel so bad for herself. She should feel so damn bad for herself the what the shit that she doing to her family okay they still riding for her ass and she's still here playing for them. girl it is what it is okay um 
this whole situation, let me get little Zora out the way. Little Zora and Nikki, Nikki come over there, you know, Zora looking in the Bible, trying to look up some Bible verses or whatever for grace and all that stuff. That's what she claimed. And the Nikki up there complained about, you know, Dante, he won't even say what the league wants them to say or whatever. He won't say anything. He won't do this or whatever. And it's like, boy, you was in the wrong. And what you trying to do? You trying to be this fake ass Colin Kaepernick? It's like at this point, I should basically say, you know, if you don't stand, I'm going to be gone. You know, Zora, are you listening to me? Listen, she got in her feelings because Zora just really wasn't paying attention and really wasn't here for the bullshit. She was like, you up in here looking at a Bible or a book that was written by men 3,000 years ago or whatever, and you got somebody that got real life problems right dead in front of your face. You know what, Zora? Fuck you. I thought you was a friend. I said, since when? Y'all just met. Y'all throw this love and friendship thing around too quick, bitch. Just because we known each other for two weeks, we ain't friends. Okay? We acquaintances. We trying to get there. Okay? Give me some time, bitch. I'm still trying to figure your ass out. Bitch, Nikki, I don't trust the hoe. Okay? I really feel like Nikki trying to make Zora her girlfriend. Even though I'm cool with that, I'm still not cool with it. You get what I'm saying? I'm cool with a little lesbian stuff, but I don't want to see it with them. Because I think like, you know, Z Nikki got a little motive i don't know i don't know how that's gonna play out you know what i'm saying i just don't know but um you know zora feels some type of way she go over there talking to bishop about um how she feel and you know what she should do or whatever and she get a little advice from him and then you know um nikki had came over there to the crib and basically said she broke up with dante because she stayed with her and she was like yes she's like oh my god girl i have my stuff hidden up in the bushes just in case okay girl i said oh 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 Girl, Zora, you got out of one situation. You about to get your ass in another situation. Now, let me tell you something. I know a predator when I see one. Nikki a predator, okay? Nikki knows what she want and what she want is Zora. And she wants what's between her legs, okay? She want a snack. No, no, no. Okay? That's what it feel like. You know what I'm saying? I, am I the only one that's getting them teas? Okay. We on the same page. Moving back along. Um. <clears throat> so, um, what else was going on in this episode? Um, Charity overhears Grace talking to Jacob and was like, girl, let me tell you something, sir. Okay, so you mean to tell me you went on ahead and sold your property to Harmony and Hope or whatever? Mind you, Charity was in there too. And, um, you know, they was trying to disguise that's what they was arguing about because Gigi had came in on them arguing at the beginning. And then they was trying to disguise that or whatever. And, um, you know, Jacob was like, bitch, we was arguing about this bitch right here. She got Phyllis fulfilled to Mars and all that stuff. She was like, bitch. But anyway, she said, you need to go talk to your wife and um, see why the fuck he trying to build and take up all this um land or whatever because we saw one from nando um got out uh got out that meeting or whatever with chair uh grace um he had called up bill whitmore bob whitmore okay and so at this point you know charity goes over there to feel um to feel and was like so why you ain't telling me what, what what's the deal with hope and harmony um just buying up all the property around um calvary what's going on with that it was like bitch i didn't know shit about that it was like i thought she was supposed to be bob whitmore bitch i thought i did too now do y'all think that he genuinely did not know or do you think that um he playing the game but i think he probably really didn't know like bob is doing some underhanded shit to him too okay bob playing him he playing charity charity playing her family everybody playing everybody up in this bitch god damn bitch and then the saddest part of the episode um, Lady May, she finds out because Korean, you know, she got this sight, excited news. She up in uh, her little boudoir, her closet or whatever, looking at stuff, trying on stuff or whatever. Like, oh shit, bitch, my man finna um, propose to me. I'm about to be, I'm about to be an honest woman again. <laughs> yes. Okay. And then she get a phone call from Korean. Korean is like, Lady May, this is Korean. Okay, girl, I know, I know your number. That's what your name popped up on the thing. What's up? Girl, it's some stuff going down. So listen, you know, I'll take care of the calendars or whatever. And um, you know, Connie and them calendars, but on the calendar it's saying that, you know, um, they gonna take your name off the scholarship. Girl, and they said that it's by um Misty, not uh Connie, it's Misty that's doing it. She was like, Okay, girl, I got this. So she go down there to uh Calvary to go talk to Con uh Miss Misty, right? Misty already told her bitch I was the one that was um, you know, helped uh I, I, I voted for your ass to get out, okay? Because you couldn't tell us. Miss, the whole thing is you cannot tell me that you had no idea what was going on with 
Mac. You cannot tell me that you did not know that he was doing what he was doing. And here's my thing about that, because it comes up again, because she says, listen, you need to stop fighting this. You need to just let it go. And it was not me that really said this. It was actually Vita, the one that Mac, Mac was actually raping repeatedly, 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 and using the money from this scholarship to cover up, okay? And then, so she goes over there trying to talk to Darlene and Vita. And, um... That was another thing that they were saying. You can't tell me that you did not know this was your brother. And at the end of the day, that, that, I hate that statement because it's not necessarily true in all cases. Some people know what's going on. And then there are cases where you can be real close to a person or you think you know a person and you just never know that they had this other side of them that they was out here doing all this evil stuff. And they, they hit it so well that you just never knew. And then this made um, Lady May break down and say, the shit that Mac was doing to you, my daddy was doing to me. And so maybe, you know, I did turn a blind eye or I just wasn't trying to see it. But technically speaking, I really did not know. Okay. But I understand the pain that you're going through. And they was like, you need to come to the meeting and you need to tell them that too. You know, and um, she came back in the house and, you know, Bishop had hurt them. The kids down there are or whatever she come back in the house and she was just so defeated i felt so bad she was up in that closet and she's just sitting on the floor bishop was there to comfort her and everything i was just like oh my god this is so sad like we're really trying to get stuff together and it's just not coming together the way that we want to just like um charity uh grace said the family in the church is fucking drowning okay into harmony and hope like ever since this connie bitch and put this shit i blame connie <laughs> I know that the Greenleafs ain't all together, you know, all up to part or whatever. But, bitch, I blame Connie because Connie is the one that wanted Hope and Harmony up in this bitch, okay? Bringing Tormor. And, you know, let me go back to, um, before I end this video, the whole situation with Charity. And this is where I, I like I said in the beginning, I kind of understand why she's doing some of the stuff that she's doing. But at the end of the day, it's just too far. We get it, Charity. You literally, we had sympathy for you like in the first couple of seasons because they were treating you like you were invisible, like you were not there. She has classic middle child syndrome, okay? She, you know, felt like she was the outsider or whatever. We get that. They didn't care too much for her or it, they made it, a, they, the, the show made it seem as though that's what was going on, that they didn't care for or not necessarily care. They just didn't take the time out to, you know, check in on her and say, girl, you okay? And, you know, worry about her like they worried about everybody else because in the first couple of seasons, it was all about Faith and Mac and all that stuff. And and then Grace coming back in, she got pushed further to the back. So now, she like, fuck y'all because y'all didn't get a, give a fuck about me. So now I'm just finna screw y'all over. But at the end of the day, when you do shit like that, you are not just hurting them. You're going to be hurting yourself because you're going to isolate yourself from the rest of your family when they find out that you had a hand in this, okay? And what you going to feel like when you ain't going to have nobody to turn to for real this time? You already went through it with, um, you know, the people that was supposed to be in your life didn't, wasn't there for you or, or, or disappointed you or whatever. Now what you going to do now when you ain't got nobody? Girl, Charity, I can't feel sorry for you no more, okay? Because you're going too far. But anyway, if I missed something, put it down in the comments. Let's discuss how do you feel like this um, next three episodes going to go, okay? What do you think Bob Whitmore is doing with this property that he's trying to do with Calvary? Is he trying to build it up some more or whatever and make it into a mega, mega church? Or is he trying to do something else with it? What do you think is going on with JJ? Uh, JJ. AJ, do you think he's sick? Uh, I, I was leaning towards that. I don't see him. I don't know if he's going to sell the pills. That's going to put a bigger target on his back. Like, what's going on? Um... And this Carissa shit, bitch. Who gon' fig? Who gon' who gon' clock her teeth? Mind you, before um 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 Jacob had went up there to the uh you know after um Grace had said you need to go ask your wife what's going on since she was all up there um sitting on the hill and he knows that something is going on, but he ain't got no proof yet. 
that bitch had the nerve to be laying in the bed in the clothes that she fornicated in. I said, so that means that you still got them soiled ass drawers on. You nasty bitch. And then got your son next to you just because she had a little uh, nightmare. Girl, Jacob said, I go sleep out on the couch, okay? Because I ain't got time right now. He disguised it as a little baby just, you know, be doing a lot in the bed or whatever. But no, Jacob knows some shit is going on because once a cheetah, cheetahs knows cheetah moves, okay? And he's potting them, okay? He said, bitch, I used to do that. And you saw in the preview for next week, she said, Girl, you trying to come at me? Well, how many nights have you been gone consecut consecutively? You know, been gone or uh, whatever night after night after night coming in late and all that shit, bitch. You better get out of my face. I said, Carissa, two wrongs don't make it right, baby. <laughs> y'all tell me how y'all feel about this episode, and I will see y'all later. Peace.